Hello everyone. Today's lesson is going to be about doing a bald fade with about a three eighths of an inch level of hair on top. And what we're going to do is we're going to do this with the adjustable clippers. I have did a video before with just the detachable clippers and upon request a lot of people asked to do one with adjustable clippers. So what I'm going to be using today, I'll be using a wall five star senior and we're going to just use just that clipper and we're going to build all the way up from skin we're going to do a low ball fade too so it's not going to be high and tight not going to be medium it's pretty much going to be low so i want you to follow me as i go through the steps just for review as i've taught on other fading uh, videos that i've done we're going to create the elevator going up and we're going to walk it down step by step until the fade is complete all right now let's go let's get started first thing we're going to do is we're going to take this wall five star magic clip and we're going to close it all the way and we're going to put the first line in it's just above outliner ball so it's not exactly skin i could do outliner ball to make it skin but the reason why i don't want to do that is because it's a whole lot easier to get that last line out if i take the outliners at the end so i'm going to start with this this is going to be our first level we're going to take it all the way around So once again, we're keeping it low, and we're going to go all the way around. Get this cleaned up. Once again, since it's low, we're obviously going to go underneath the occipital area in the back of the head. So we're going to go underneath that, keep everything low. Always clean as we go, so comb, cut. Comb, cut, comb, cut. Hello. Always clean as you go. Now this is all the way closed and we got our first line put in this is our first level so now we're going to go to the next floor we could do the half which is 116 we do 116 close or i could open this up all the way but just for teaching purposes 116 closed next level we're going to do about this much of space so from the indention of your finger to the end of your fingertip. So that's roughly about an inch. We may do a little less than an inch, but roughly an inch. Number one key in fading is correct spacing because you need room to fade. You need room to fade. After you know your guards and you know what you're doing, you need room to fade. Cut, comb, cut, comb, cut, just to make sure we're clean. It's also important to make sure you have the clipper laid up against the skin. Because sometimes we'd be like this and that's how you get the choppy look. We don't want that. We want everything nice and smooth. So make sure your clipper's on the balls and the edge. Second line done. As we can see there, got a nice little, make sure this is cleaner. Second line done. And go to the one and a half, which is in my right hand. And we're gonna make this next line. So we got closed with nothing, closed one sixteenth, closed one and a half. Same spacing, just a, a, a knuckle finger length. Cut, 
combing and cutting. We're just trying to get that next line in. Now the higher you go, the lines don't look as more defined as far as the higher in length you go. So we're just going to take this. All we're doing is just giving us room to fade. But I want you to understand, when you're fading, you can still blend into this area even though you want the fade to be low. Because the majority of the fade takes place between the first and second level. So all this is still going to be dark, and then when we finish blending this out, when we finish blending this out, this is going to give it that glow, which you'll see at the end, which, which is where the fade will take place. So all this is still dark. So don't be scared to go up in there as long as you're using the correct guard because you need to have everything blend. We're going to take this two, which is right after the one and a half. We're going to take this two guard and just reduce this last bit of bulk here on the side. And then we're going to start to come down. So we have one first level, which is closed with no guard. Then we have the one sixteenth level. Then we have the one and a half level, like right up in here where you see the bulk at. Now we're going to hit this two and take this bulk out. And then we're going to start to come down and reduce and blend everything out. So as you can see here, as I'm taking this two and I'm going up and against the grain on all of this, there's barely any hair coming off. Cause that'll tell you that's the size. So there's not a whole lot of hair coming off, just a little bit. Because as we know, there's not much difference between the one and a half and the two. But just to make sure that we, we have everything even, then we're going to go ahead and just make sure we get it cut. So as I'm doing this, I'm just kind of re you know reducing that side just to get down. So when we open up that one and a half, which when we open up that one and a half, it will be almost equivalent to a two, which I'll, I'll get into an explanation of that in here in a second. All right, so now we have this zero, I mean closed all the way, one sixteenth, one and a half, and then up here we have the two, because pretty much on top against it will be almost like a three. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go with the one and a half that was right here. We're going to open it all the way up so we can blend out this two, because I want to show you something. When you take your clippers, if you ever had the masters, you know it has four or five notches right here on the side. The wall, it don't, but the same principle still applies. So if we have this one and a half, which would be almost like, uh, I would say, if you have one, two, three, and four, you would equivalent the one eighth is one dollar, the two eighths as two dollars, and the three eighths as three dollars, four eighths, four dollars. So if we put it in terms of money so you can understand, each notch that you go is worth 20 cents. So if there's five notches, five times 20 would equal a whole dollar if each notch was worth 20 cents. So now that we're at this one and a half, this automatically puts us at like a dollar 50 because it's a one and a half. So I only will have to open it all the way and then half of all the way, which will put us pretty much at a dollar 90 and then like a dollar 70 and then dollar 50. Okay, just only because we have the one and a half. If we were starting with the one, we'd go all the way and each notch would take it down a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with it all the way open. And if the two is $2, one ninety 
is close to that. So as we're going out blending, we're just going to release off a little bit, and that'll put us flesh up against the two, which will eliminate any extra bolt to, to interfere with our fade. So that's what we're going to do here. And then I, as, as I go around, I'm going to slowly, as I go all the way around with, the, with it all the way open, I'm going to close it and then come all the way back around and then close it all the way and go back into the one and a half zone. And we're going to reduce all this and get ready for our next drop down. So we're going to take this. Once again, this is all the way open. All I'm doing here is just combing, cutting, keeping a nice rhythm. Comb and cut, comb and cut. Same principles apply as any fade. Same principles. Depending on texture, you might do things a little bit differently, depending on thickness, but the same principles when it comes to guard calibration are the same. No matter if it's straight hair, wavy, curly, thin, thick, same principles apply. Close it a little bit. Come back. Once again, as I'm going over this, I want to make sure you catch that I'm going in the X motion. So as I'm make sure I'm doing my blending, when I put the levels in, I was very stiff. But now that I'm putting the, the blend in, I'm going in an X motion. So we'll go from left to right, from right to left on an angle. It's almost like making an X, so we're just kind of crossing it out. We're eliminating. Close it all the way and go right back into that area where we put the initial line in with it all the way closed. And as you can see, all of this hair is reducing, but the main part of our fade and where it's going to take place is going to be right up in this first zone. Close, no guard, 1 16th. Now we're in the 1 8th. This is the guard we skipped over. So, majority of our blend is going to take place with this guard here. I'm going to open it. Once again, the same rules apply if you had the five notches. Since one and a half, we already did. I only need to have this about halfway open. I don't need it all the way. Halfway open because halfway open would put us at about the range of a one and a half which we just did when we had the one and a half all the way closed. So now we're just reducing. Reducing it down. Sometimes I use just the edge. I don't put the whole blade on, just these four teeth. 
just to make sure I don't catch too much because I'm trying to create the blend. As you can see, this is already starting to get lighter, and as you can see here, it's a whole lot thicker. You just get that right there, it's lighter, darker right there. This whole blending procedure is just about reducing, reducing, reducing. You start with your correct spacing, and then you just step by step, just walk it down. I'm going to close it all the way. As you can see, it's getting lighter and lighter. And as you're blending, you want to make sure that you don't run into another zone. If I go up too high, I'm going to be in the one and a half zone. So I got to stay where I'm at. Now we're going to take that off. We put this first line in with this 1 16th, which is half of that 1 8th. I'm going to open it a little bit. Not even halfway, just a little bit. I just want to get a feel for where this line is. Once again, remembering on an angle. And as you can see, as I'm cutting, the comb is never too far. One, two, maybe three strokes, and then the comb. That creates a rhythmic clipper comb cutting motion, which is very soothing and relaxing to the client. If your clients aren't falling asleep in your chair, you might not be doing the best job. <clears throat> a lot of times if you ever hear clients say I just knew when I sat down I was getting a bad haircut or I knew I was getting a good haircut it's because how you transfer your tools to them and that energy has a lot to do with how they feel the haircut's going to turn out so as we're coming back around as you can see, it's getting lighter and lighter. And this is that 1 16th, probably about a quarter of the way open. And I'm attacking that 1 16th line that we put in at first, at first level. 
Now that we've made it around to this side, we're going to close it all the way. And do the same exact thing. I'm only in the area where that first line was created. I'm not all up here. So. And if you follow step by step, you can get the same exact result. Some people ask me why do I use walls over Andes. I just prefer walls. I like these lithium ion batteries. These clippers are very light, easy to move, good power. It's just what I prefer. Some people prefer the Andes. I used to cut ant with Andes for a long time, you know, using their tools and stuff, but I just, I like what I like. So. Now, as you can see, majority of that is already blended. Now we're just going to take out this last, this last part. And when we started, we had three lines. Now we have one. So it's all the way open. Just kind of attacking it a little bit. Once again, the clipper's not too far from the cone. They go hand in hand. Now we're going to close it halfway. Remind you, this last little bit line was done with these same clippers, no guard, all the way closed. So I'm just reducing it all the way. And as I continue to do that, that line fades away. As you can see. It's getting lighter and lighter as we come all the way down. And remember, whenever, whatever you put the line in with, that's what you have to inevitably take it out with. And what I'm showing you here is the process and how to get to that. Now, most of you would look at this and say, oh, that's already blended. But that's the difference between a beginner and a professional. I'm going to show you how to put the finishing touch on it. Because this may look blended a little bit up close, but when a person walks away, you can see that it's not finished. It's not polished. Now we're going to go all the way close because that is what we put it in with so now we're going to take it all the way out with that like I said I'm just staying right on where I put that line in I don't want to go up into my other zones that's going to make it me put a new line in I'm going to have to do a whole other haircut
right. Now we're all blended. Now I'm just going to take outliners just to get his skin. So now what we're doing is just taking out this last little bit just to give it that extra glow to it. Just taking off this extra little hair. And once again, as I'm taking this hair off, I'm using just the edge of the blade, just the corner. I don't have it flat on there because I'm not trying to create another line. So this is just a clean up, just to get his skin, the baldness real low. Now as you can see, the fade takes place really low. All this stuff up here, we didn't even have to touch that because he didn't want anything off the top. He wanted it nice and dark up there. So now we got the fade. Low ball fade. This is what you would call a low ball fade. Obviously, if it was medium, it'd be up a little higher. And if it was high and tight, it'd be up around the crown. So this is low ball fade. As you can see, all the way around, fade is nice and clean. What we just did, we finished off the fade, put the outliner, got slow bald, so everything is complete now. I'm just going to go ahead and finish doing the lineup, but um, I, I hope that answers all your questions. If there's any other questions, you can follow me on social media at Mr. Pro Fresh. that's at M-R-P-R-O-F-R-E-S-H, or on Twitter at Mr. Underscore Pro Fresh. And you can visit my website, professionalcuts.com. Uh, book appointments online if you will come to get a haircut if you want a consultation to learn if you want a one-on-one -on -one session I charge hundred and fifty dollars per class I'm in the Atlanta Georgia marketplace that'll give you about an hour and a half worth of information one-on-one -on -one questioning whatever it is that you need just uh, shoot me an email at willstam at gmail.com and uh, I hope this helps you if not you know just let me know what the next steps are so we can get you on the correct path to uh, better in your career